This extraordinary work by El Greco doesn't just tell the story of Pentecost. The entire painting is imbued with the presence of the Holy Spirit, as told in Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament. The work was created in 1600, most likely as a multi-panelled altarpiece commissioned for the Collegio de Dona Maria de Aragon, an Augustinian seminary devoted to the training of priests, although now today it hangs in the Prado in Madrid. This is the moment when the Holy Spirit entered the apostles and transformed them from the humble followers of Jesus into dynamic spiritual leaders. It is, of course, entirely appropriate for an Augustinian seminary or any seminary devoted to the training of priests, but also, I would say that the narrative and El Greco's late style of painting, the so-called mystical style, work perfectly here. El Greco depicts the bodies of the apostles as ethereal. In many respects, they don't belong to the real world. They're elongated, twisted. There's a fluidity to them that, especially en masse, for me, equates to the tongues like flames of fire that have come bringing a noise like that of a strong wind from the Holy Spirit above them. And then the flames, as we can see, have dispersed one resting on each of the apostles. The flickering flames are easily seen above the heads of the apostles furthest from us, but merge into folds of material in the foreground, and one can even be read as a hand in the case of the kneeling figure front left, whose flame crosses the body of the figure above him. This ambiguity is extended to the body of this kneeling figure, which at a glance can be comprehended as the back of someone bent over in prayer, head invisible behind the folds of a hood. El Greco has used the elongated body and this dash of white paint to confuse the eye into temporarily overlooking the top half of this apostle, which is also semi-camouflaged and so not so easily noticed. This lack of corporeal specificity speaks, I think, to the transformation taking place. The unrealistic spatial setting also complements the narrative of this piece. The long, narrow format simultaneously draws the eye upwards and emphasises the distance between the Holy Spirit and the Apostles. But it also allows each figure to be bathed in his light. Just notice the darkness behind them. In my mind, this references the unenlightened who have yet to hear the word of God. This was, after all, the moment in which the apostles were able to speak in tongues, and therefore anybody that heard them thought that their own language was being spoken. Of course, hence Pentecost is regarded as the birthday of the Christian church. If you were to count the number of figures that El Greco has depicted in Pentecost, perhaps you already have, you would know that there are 15. So in addition to the 12 apostles, very clearly we have the Virgin Mary. She is easily identified in the, the centre of the image. And then very likely he also included the two other Marys. There is a passage in the Bible just prior to the moment in which the Holy Spirit descends that suggests that women were present with the praying apostles. I also think that the three Marys were probably included at the behest of Donna Maria de Aragon, who obviously was a woman herself and who, in effect, had paid for the altarpiece. And just finally, the figure second from the right, who's looking out and engaging with the viewer, is a self-portrait of El Greco himself. I think perhaps that is 
testament that he's included himself in this image uh, to his, his own very, very strong faith.